Hey y'all, it's Erin from the Underground Railroad. You are tuning in to another great show on the 4 Eyed Radio Network. To listen to more of this show and other great shows, tune in to www.4eyedradio.com. That's right, kids. This is your good pal, Steve-O, from 4 I Radio Network. I'm here to talk about a great person. Now, think about it. Who are you going to call when your logo looks like shit? You want a kick-ass logo. You want people to see your logo and go, you know what? That's an awesome logo. I wonder who did that logo. Well, I'll tell you who could do your logos for you. Check out Raven Designs. Special care of your work. Special inquiries? Check her out. She's got everything. Ravencruise.com is the place to go because you want a kick-ass logo. You want to stand above the rest. I guarantee it. You hear this song in the background? You know these guys have a kick-ass logo. It's a recognizable logo. And I guarantee it if Raven was back in that time period, she probably would have made it for them. And they would have been like, hells yeah, people know who we are because we got Raven Designs behind us. Check out Ravencruise.com if you want a kick-ass logo for business cards. Maybe you want to put it on a car. These guys did. Maybe you want to put it uh, on your building. You want something kick-ass. You want something that people can see and just go, this is awesome. Check out ravencruise.com. And you know what? Do it. Do it right now. You got nothing else going on for you right now. Get a kick-ass logo. Check out her artwork, ravencruise.com. Hello, everybody. It's time for another brand new episode of the Long Box Cast. This is going to be episode number... 24 and we're recording it on september 8th 2014 uh we're gonna hear the great tales from kyle kyle just got back from uh one of the comic cons and uh he's gonna tell us he's gonna show us some spoils he's even got some surprises for everybody so before uh without further ado uh let's jump into some theme music and then let's get this uh this comic book cast on its mighty morphin way that's right I stole something from Eric Berry's podcast. Sue me. And now I'm going to steal something else from it. Boom. Yeah, that's right. We do. Kyle and I got that. We got this huge, mighty Morphin Power Ranger force that you've never seen before. You know why? Because some giant head just popped out of nowhere <laughs> with a crazy robot. And he was just like, find me two middle-aged guys with attitude. We're going to create this comic book podcast of face. So, yes, we are back on the Longbox cast. Uh, Kyle had an adventure during the weekend. Uh, so, before we jump into Kyle's awesome weekend, i got to get some stuff out of the way. I know what you guys are thinking. Steve. Kyle, we love it when you tell us about your sponsors and where we can find you. Live shows, when we had one, it's a lost episode. Once we find it, you might be able to listen to it. But we literally had people chanting, like, live, read, live, leave. We're like, okay, okay, we'll do it. Here you go. This is what you want. So you can find us on www.longboxcast.com, part of the 4i Radio Network, also known as The Fern. You can also find other great shows on 4iradio.com. To listen to the show, you can find us on 4iradio.com, Spreaker, iTunes, Stitcher, Zoom Marketplace, Blackberry Podcast, Blueberry Podcast, Mirror Guide, Double Twist, YouTube, Swell Radio, SoundCloud, and Player FM. Also, this podcast is brought to you by Raven Designs, illustrates and designs to fit your personalities. For samples and inquiries, visit ravencruise.com. Where you also, Kyle, you like to give to charity. Yes, yes I do. Do you love charities? Oh, I love them. You know what's a great charity? What's that? It's Comic Care Comics. Really? Yes. Tell me more about Comic Care Comics. I will tell you, this is a charity that people can donate comic books to this foundation. And this foundation goes and visits children in the hospitals and gives them free comic books. They're like, here, here, you're going to read something? Read this. Because kids are amazed by superheroes and all other great comic books. And also, the Arizona Avengers show up sometimes in their full costumes to cheer these kids up while they're getting their 
their fixies or their boo boos scratched or um I, you know what I'm just going to say some of them might have cancer you know what it's a terrible thing and that's why we give these comic books to these children so you know what they children can do Kyle you know what they can do what's that they can kick cancer in its fucking stupid ass okay and that's all I got for now so um but yes yeah, so Kyle you had an adventure in Baltimore. Yes. yes. This uh, past weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was out at the Baltimore Comic Con. It is a local show. I have, well, not local to me, but I guess, but I have been going for the past eight years, and I have to say, this has probably been one of the best uh, years I've gone. They finally upgraded their. Uh, uh, place where they had, I mean, they still had it at the Baltimore Convention Center, but they moved it to a different hall, and there was so much more space this time around. Normally, when you go in, like Saturday, when everyone's there, you're bumping into people, you might grope some lady, and she might smack you across the face. That's kind of hot. <laughs> Not the groping, the smacking across the face. Uh, I'm just going to say that. Wink. Um, this time around, actually, there was space between, like, everything. I mean, the only crowded parts were probably, like, when you go to, like, someone's booth or something, you're just checking out, like, their back issues, and you're flipping through, flipping through. You might bump into someone because, you know, they only got, like, so much space. But in the aisles between, like, all the different booths, there's so much room to walk around. It was amazing. Now, a question I want to ask you, because uh, this is a, this is what's been happening with a lot of, Comic Con kind of conventions now. Uh, mm -hmm. Was there a lot of booths out there that actually was selling comics? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, because that's a big thing out here. We really don't have those anymore. Also, uh, the members of uh, Punch the Walls of Reality have run into that in the Texas area as well. And of course, San Diego Comic Con is no longer really a big place where you kind of can get comic books. It's more of just like check out all the movies. So I wanted yeah. to know if they still have that. Still kind of basically what a, what Comic Con started as was for comic book artists to kind of get together other fans to meet them and you know show off their work, get things picked up. Even some people are like, look at my Batman, uh, Stanley, and he'd be like, I'm Spider Man, bitch, get the fuck out of my face. Who the fuck are you? I'm Guardians of the Galaxy, bitch, out. Stanley, well, really nice guy on the holidays, though. Yeah. Well, this uh, this convention, along with another convention over here on the East Coast called Heroes Con out in Charlotte, North Carolina, both of them are pretty much strictly comic books. I mean, at this show, I think the guest of honor was Peter Mayhew, the guy who was Chewbacca. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I have a horrible Chewbacca. I wish you would have said, like, Frank Oz, and I'd be like, oh, comic books. Mm. Well, <laughs> it was him. He was the biggest name there. I mean, but for comic book-wise, George Perez was there. He was at his booth, uh, you know, signing books. And, uh, let's see, George Perez. Oh, uh, apparently Jerry the King Waller was there. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this or not, but he also actually is an artist. No, there's no artists anymore. It's all it's all tracers now. Right? <laughs> no, no, Jerry the King Law. He's an actual artist for a comic book. No, oh, very nice, very nice. So yeah. I know. So what was like? Because uh, you you were able to enlighten us with a bunch of pictures, uh, which were really cool. Uh, yes. We posted those on the Facebook page. Uh, what was something that you like when you were going there? You you knew that you were like going to be super excited for, or you were like looking forward to, and then what were some things that you might have just stumbled upon that you were just all like, "Holy crap, this is awesome." Um, <clears throat> one thing I really like looking forward to is Sundays, because that's when like a lot of the vendors are like, "Hey, um, we're gonna chop down prices," because I don't feel like carrying all these damn books home with me, and or my wife will kill me. Yeah, so they'll half price a lot of books and that's the best time to go shopping for uh, comic books if anyone else out there is listening if you go to a convention Saturday it's always the packed one you're gonna it, everyone's there I get it, Saturday's the best day to go Sunday, that's the best day for me because that's when all the books are on sale 
and you, you don't have to waste as much money, and a lot of the dealers are a lot more willing to haggle on prices. Now, is it like kind of old school haggling with like, oh, you want this for 1944, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49? You're like, dude, I said a dollar. What the? <laughs> well, are you playing a mean market, kid? I don't know why well, everyone's an in the 1950s. <laughs> well, here's an example. Um, a friend of mine that we went with a couple years ago, he had 30 bucks in his pocket. He saw one book he wanted, and they wanted 30 bucks for it. He went up to the guy who was like, I'll give you 20 bucks for it. He goes, no. He's like, look, I got 20 bucks in my pocket. I want this book. I'll give it to you for 20 bucks. I'll, I'll buy it for 20 bucks. He goes, deal. I mean, this was like five minutes before the show closed. You know, guy wants to make a last minute sale. And now my friend just walked out with an extra 10 bucks in his pocket. So he doesn't feel like he just spent every single that's true. How you set that up? You almost set it up like the thrift store music, music video there. You're like, we're going to a convention. Only got $20 in my pocket. I, I, I'm like, this is fucking awesome. We need to have a long box cast CD. Why? Because I bust out musical things or something? Yes. Dude, it would be epic. We'll look into that. We'll see if the fans... Yes, fan. Because I know it's not going to happen. <laughs> Fans, if you would like to hear musical renditions of songs, I can nerd them out for you by your request. Um, that's really cool. One other big question I wanted to ask you was, uh, how is the weather there? Like, is this the perfect time of year to do it? Is it, like, just right before it gets, like, super-ass cold or right before it's, like, I mean, I know it's probably hot for you guys, but not as hot as it here in Arizona. Right. Like, what's the, what the, what's the weekend temperature-wise? Well, Friday was actually uh, pretty humid, but I mean, it was, it was bearable. I could live with it. Saturday, um, I guess it was the same, and then like right after the convention, it downpoured. So oh. thankfully that held up until after the convention. Okay, cool. And then Sunday, we just got like our first fall weather, so you get like that nice crisp breeze, cold air, and all that stuff. Yeah, it I wouldn't was nice. know any of that. Yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't have that anymore. In fact, <laughs> we'll we'll get to that because I do want Kyle to finish the story. Uh, a crazy thing happened today in Arizona. Uh, so if you are listening today, which is uh, was it? Um, I believe it's the eighth um, of September. Uh, people in Arizona will know what I'm talking about. So okay, so your buddy was able to swindle somebody, got got a good deal on a book. Uh, what was I saw a lot of your spoils. What was like one of the the top priorities that you were just all like, oh my god, I grabbed this, and you punched like a baby because the baby was going for it. Wait, who told you about the baby? Oh, dude, I know everything. Oh, okay. If there's a um... baby being punched, I know about it. <laughs> oh, okay. FYI, www.facebook page, I like to punch babies.com, founding member. Mm, but to be fair, okay. when I started that website, that baby that I punched was kind of being a dick. Uh, okay. Um, there wasn't really any main books I was looking for. Uh, I was looking for First Parents of Black Widow and First Parents of Hawkeye, but you know everyone's just charging out the wazoo for that. I was also looking for First Parents of Mockingbird in her costume. Oh yeah. Yeah. Again, people were going out the wazoo for that. So I actually did end up getting. Let me see if I can find it real quick here. They like have all my books. It is Astonishing Tales, uh, issue number 12. It is the first time they actually mention Mockingbird by her actual name back when she was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. So I figure I'll pick this up now just in case this book decides to go up in price when, uh, it, when she appears in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, when she does appear in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I have a feeling that if they do it correctly... Uh, if people like the character, her books will then be flying off the shelves and people would like to know more about this character. That's how I realize oh, what yeah. happens with usually comic books. If the if the movie is done well and sparks interest mm -hmm. in people who really had no interest in these characters or did not know anything about these characters, then these books start getting out of print 
Which kind of sucks, because oh, yeah. then if you're a fan already of all this kind of stuff, and then you're like, oh, I'm walking right in just to get my normal book, and you're like, what do you mean it's all sold out? Oh, you fucking people who just jumped on this comic book bandwagon. You have ruined it for everybody again. I fucking hate mm-hmm. you, and I hope you die. Baby punched! <laughs> well, I mean, that's... You're right. I mean, uh, her first appearance in her costume was Marvel Team-Up number 95. It was her and Spider-Man. That book was originally a $2 book. Mm-hmm. Two bucks. Two bucks. They announced that she's going to be in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's now 30 bucks. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, dude, that was... Yeah, I had this huge discussion with, actually, people during the, uh... During this crazy-ass party I went to on the weekend, uh, I got to an argument almost with this guy about Batman, how he's all like, oh, I don't like Ben Affleck being Batman. I'm like, did you see the trailer, though, of him in the, you know, the Dark the you know Dark Knight Returns book or whatnot? He's like, I don't even know what that was from. I was like, oh, dude, dude, don't. Mm. don't I hate it when people are like that. I mean, yes, I get it. You know, the movies are meant to get some people in the comic books, but there's those few people who just only watch the movies, they don't bother reading comic books, so I'm like, read the source material, you might actually like it. Well, it's not so much as that, but, like, I do, like, this is the thing, it's like, look, the costume's looking good in that movie and everything like that, again, I can't judge anything yet, because we have not heard him speak. I don't know how he's gonna be as a Bruce Wayne. I don't know how he's gonna be as a Batman. Still, to this day, the Bruce Wayne that I felt was played the best was Michael Keaton. I thought mm-hmm. Michael Keaton hit it off with a great Bruce Wayne. His Batman, on the other hand? Meh. He did a good job, but, uh, I, you know, as much as everyone, I like the interpretation of Christian Bale's Batman, but I do not like mm-hmm. the voice of that Batman, because halfway through the films, you, you can't understand him. So, I think yeah. that's the biggest thing. Again, like I said, I'm like, your best move right now is just to cast somebody and just have Kevin Conroy, like, dub over their voices. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I mean, overall, I mean, it was a good weekend. Um... There was a costume contest that was pretty cool. Got to see a lot of different costumes. Uh, we didn't get to stay for the whole thing. We basically just stayed for like the little kid one because, you know, those are probably like the best looking costumes, you know, for little kids and whatnot. And then we just got bored, walked out, and then we saw the adults one who put actual money and time into their costumes. And that's when you just get to take all the bunch of pictures and they don't care and you don't have to wait for the damn for them to walk down the uh, aisles for the contest. Yeah, no, um, that's actually kind of the cool thing. I really do like cosplayers when they take the time and effort to do that. I, don't get me wrong, I will give people credit when they do like the poor man's version, but you know they took the time and effort to make the poor man's version, where it was like, it's a Thor costume, but the majority of it's like out of tinfoil, but they took <laughs> the time and effort to do it, not just these people yeah. are like, I'm just going to grab a mask and a shirt, and look at me, I'm a hot, sexy Green Lantern. I'm like, oh. First I mean, off, Mom, no, you're not. I don't know why you bought a children small, because you got them up and <laughs> top, and that's disgusting. And yeah. why did you cut the match? <laughs> I mean, there was a few costs, like, children was one that we watched. First place winner was Mystique. It was this little girl, probably couldn't have been any older than five years old. She had, like, a blue jumpsuit on, her face was blue, her hands were blue, everything was blue, and then she had, like, a red wig on, or her hair was dyed red. I am not really sure, but... It was great. And then she killed it when she quoted uh, the movie when she's like, oh, don't you think I look beautiful this way, baby? And everyone just started laughing Damn. their asses off. Yeah. She dropped it like it was 18 years younger hot. And then she, when they called her as a winner, they're like, do you want to say anything? She goes, yes. I can transform into anything, but today I transformed into a winner. Oh, Damn, little girl's bringing the heat. She's like that softball player girl or whatnot in those that league mm-hmm. thing or the baseball. I forget. I wasn't following sports. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, we are going to be doing a football segment now because football is back, and I know Kyle's a huge football fan, just like me. No, <laughs> no, I'm no, not that actually. Was a joke. I'm not either. The only thing that oh, I'm excited okay. about football season was coming up. I'm like, oh my god, the next season of the league is now on Netflix. <laughs> Nice. Now, I'm more of a baseball fan myself, so... Oh, you are into sports. Well, I can't lie. I like hockey, so... St. Louis Cardinal shirt right here. Oh. Okay, now I'm really thinking, like, Eric said... Like, I told Eric if he took the time and effort, because he's a huge Diamondbacks fan, and he loves mm-hmm. baseball. And I was like, you guys should just really do, like, a sports show, you know? Like... 
like someone get together because like Matthew knows basketball, you know, uh, he knows baseball, you know, baseball. Um, <laughs> just like I'm just trying to find people, but even if it's just a, but Eric's like, yeah, I would do that, but I really don't want to take the time and effort to follow them off season. Like he's just like I just follow the games that are on season stuff like that. So I was like, oh, okay. yeah, I'm yeah. the same way. But then again, I'm also trying to promote a uh, sports show on a nerd podcast station. So. Okay. Oh, speaking of podcasts, there was actually a few other podcasts at the convention, like doing actual podcasts. Nice. Yes. I I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, and. uh Again, I wish I had thought of this sooner. I wish I had actually thought of, like, you know, some type of, like, flyer, business card, something for Longbox Cast to pass out there. People could check us out, but I didn't think of that until, like, on my way to the convention. Well, don't worry about that, because when we went to our very first uh, Comic-Con as a uh, as having a podcast, mm-hmm. um, we were with, actually, another network at the time, and it was kind of bad, because it's like, we're sitting at this booth, we really didn't do stuff. It wasn't until the following year where we established the 4i Radio Network, where we actually mm-hmm. contacted a bunch of people from that community, and now we're actually, like, friends with all these people, where we're able to get in and do panels and do all this kind of stuff. So, probably next year, if you wanted to, get a couple of your friends who are comic book friends and stuff like that, you could probably represent the Longbox cast out there and even do some of that stuff. Heck, even if you get a live show, I could just, like, they'll be like, Steve's on this, and you just throw up a laptop, <laughs> and it'll be like, what? Huh? Or, you know, whatever you want to do. But, yeah, I mean, like, it, it, I completely understand, like, because, like, when we first went there, we didn't, like, get to promote ourselves at all. We were attached to this other network, mm-hmm. and it wasn't until the following year where we had, like, we had flyers, we had all this stuff, so we got prepared. So, you know, it's a completely different thing, but it does give you, like, an idea of, like, oh, I can do stuff here if I wanted to. Um, oh, we yeah. try to do that yeah. too. Hopefully next year I want to be able to interview people, whether or not I'm just pulling out my iPhone and getting just a recording from that and then just implementing <laughs> it onto like, you know, a podcast thing. So, but, um, no, but, uh, yeah, no, we all loved your picks. Uh, I think those are really kick ass and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, that Batman picture I posted, that thing was awesome. Like the guy, like he just be walking around with like a normal cape. It's all fine. And then like someone goes up to take a picture of him and he goes, hold on one second. Like, holds out his hands and like the wings just like fly right up and you're just like holy crap that's awesome see what i would like to do is i would like to get the 1966 batman costume and then when people want to get a picture with me like behind my back like stuck in my utility belt like no one can see it until they go like oh can i do a selfie would be like i'll be like sure old chum let's do this and they're about to do it, and then i pull up a sign that says pow and then i'll like put my fist up like that and they'll be like oh my god that's awesome so Nice. So if anyone steals that now, it came from me. <laughs> some, you know who probably would steal that? A fucking baby. <laughs> this is our well, theme for this show this week. <laughs> all right. Uh, we were brought to you by Punching Babies. Brought to you by Punching Babies. Because some days you just can't get through life without punching a little infant. Quickly, Robin, punch that baby. Okay. But actually, your little pal thing reminded me. Last year, there was a few cosplayers. They dressed up as like a Spider-Man and Nightcrawler and stuff like that. So the Spider-Man actually had like, he do like the pose of shooting the webs. Oh, nice! And attached to like his wrists were like was like a, on a spring was like the little word balloon of the whip. You know, ah. Sammy makes when he shoots out his webs. Nice. So it kind of just it was cool. And like the Nightcrawler had like the uh, bamf. You know, when he teleports and whatnot. So that was kind of cool. Very nice. People thinking outside the box. Okay, now question for you. Every time you see a Spider-Man cosplay, if it's not a little kid, when it's like kind of like mm-hmm. an adult, you know, wearing the Spider-Man, like a lot of people do a really good Spider-Man sometimes, but what's the deal with Spider-Man always wearing a backpack? Have you run into that? I think I did not see it this year, mostly because all the Spider-Man I, I saw, they were with some. Wait, no, I did see one. Yes, I did see. Wait, now I remember. I saw someone dressed up as the Miles Morales Spider-Man, and he was wearing a backpack. I think he was wearing a backpack because he's got his change of clothes in there, and he doesn't have anyone walking around with him, so you're kind of stuck with what you got. I understand that. That's why a lot of people rather play Deadpool, because you have all those pockets. It's very true. But the one thing I also said is, like, this is my idea. If you're going to cross, if you're going to, like, Cross dress as Spider Man. Now, if you're going to cosplay as <laughs> Spider Man, you should just really mm-hmm. pick the Iron Spider 
because then you can implement the backpack onto your suit. Oh, yeah. But, you know, some people don't think about it. Maybe they think, oh, hey, I'm Spider-Man on the way back to school trying to change back in my uh, stuff. And see, whatnot. I don't believe it because when I see them, I'm like, no, no, you're way older than I am. There's no way you're going back to school. Yeah. Um, uh, but, yeah, there was a lot of cool cosplays. A uh, guy last year, he did a Hulkbuster Iron Man. This year, it looks like he took his Hulkbuster Iron Man, painted it black, and was some type of football thing. I'm not really too sure. It had uh, the Baltimore Ravens logo on it. I think they were just trying to suck up or something. I don't know. Okay. Well, yeah, I have seen some... I saw a really good Hulkbuster costume online that somebody did. And then somebody also put together online a group costume that cost them, like, less than, like, 80 bucks. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was, like, I think it was, like, they said, like, under $50. And it looked really good. So I was like, okay. So what would be like? What was probably one of the best cosplays you saw as an adult? Because you said the little girl one pretty much knocked it out of the park. Oh yeah, uh, best one. I saw Black Manta. Ooh. Yeah. He had the full helmet. He had the spear. This thing looked legit. That was probably one of the best costumes I saw there. That's uh, that's pretty badass. Okay, yeah, I've yeah. never actually that you know now that you mention that, that's like a character that I've never seen yet cosplay mm-hmm. is Black Manta. Um, speaking of black, I do want to I do want to throw this out there and get your opinions. Uh, once we okay. that'll be our next thing to jump into. Um, uh, but all in all, what would you say is probably was it a great convention? Better than last year? This uh, best one you've seen oh, so far? This has definitely been one of the best conventions I've been to in a long time. Very nice. Very nice. So now some news happened, I think, sometimes last week after we recorded our show. Um, speaking of black, uh, and this is not a racist joke, but uh, Dwayne Rock Johnson was finally announced as uh, black uh, Shazam. Um, and I'm not surprised. Actually, I was very surprised. I knew he was going to be in the Shazam movie, but I did not think they were going to give him the villain role. Well, from what I read, it it's supposed to be uh, more of a, like a anti-hero role. Okay. I believe so. It's probably going to be like one of those yeah, you know, like they're going to build him up to be the villain for like maybe like the next movie or something, but for right now he's probably going to be like the men like uh Sinestro in Greenland. I was just about to say so they're going to Oh no, no. No. Don't get me wrong. That's the problem though. Don't make me like the villain. And then that was like the only part I liked about that movie was uh, in the Green Lantern one. I thought the guy playing him did a phenomenal job. And how it ended, you're kind of like, okay, as much as this movie sucked, I really now want to see the second one because he mm-hmm. did a really good job. But then, of course, it got scrapped because the whole movie tanked. So I'm really hoping because, mm-hmm. like, I like The Rock. You know, I think he's good in a lot of roles that he does, and he's very oh, humorous yeah. and stuff like that. They did talk about having Shazam be kind of like almost like a Guardians of the Galaxy kind of feel to it, meaning, like, it's going to have the humor. And I'm like, it needs to, because, mm-hmm. I mean, the little kid who becomes, you know, Shazam is, you know, like, what, 13 years old? Yeah. So he has that mentality. So mm-hmm. hopefully they find somebody, they're like, no, we're just going to pick somebody who's, like, the size of the rock, so we're going with Arnold Schwarzenegger, he'll be Shazam. Ah, Shazam! Ah! <laughs> he's like, look at me, I'm a child. I was in that movie, uh, Last Action Hero. Ah! With, ah! Look at, I, I'm not really good with my other kid right now. I had a baby with another person, and my wife was pissed. Ah, made Ecuadorians. Ah, uh, I don't know if you heard this or not, but a lot of people are saying uh, there's this joke going around that uh, Black Adam is basically Scorpion King all over again. Egyptian uh, King gets uh, uh, put to sleep for a while and gets resurrected by someone else and tries taking over the world and stuff like that. So that is that is saying, very true. Uh, it's Basically, and someone made like some type of cartoon. It was like, you know, it's a lot like this one movie with uh, Scorpion King and Black Adam's like, oh, no, no, this is nothing like that. Uh, could, and whoever he's talking to, it was probably Shazam, was like, oh, could you imagine if they got the same actor to play that guy? And uh, Black Adam's like, no, that, that would just be horrible. That would be an awful idea. Why would you do that? <laughs> oh, boy. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, I'm looking forward to it because we have not seen a, you know, Shazam movie at all. I think they used to have like a Shazam show like back in the so. day. Um Oh yeah. 
But uh, that's cool. So yeah, so I did want to talk about that because I thought that was really kind of that was finally the news we were all waiting for. Like, okay, well, we know you're attached to this. We all think it's going to be Shazam. We all knew it was Shazam. But yeah, the Black uh, the Black Adam really kind of took me because I was like, well, Black Adam's like a villain. I was like, I thought you were going to play Shazam, but I'm like, I can see you as Black Adam. I mean, I had mm-hmm. no problem with that. I was just like kind of different that they're like, we're going to get this big name actor to play a villain. And this is the first time that they've actually really pushed like the villain first. Because usually yeah, it's always definitely. like, oh, we've hired, oh, this is Henry Cavill. He's going to be playing Superman. It wasn't like, Henry Cavill is going to be Lex Luthor. And they were like, well, who the fuck is Superman? You know, kind of thing. <laughs> Which actually now, now I want everyone to start doing that. They should just be all like, well, in the Doctor Strange movie, we haven't found Doctor Strange yet. But the villain! I don't know who's that guy, but. <laughs> Sounds like Tracy Morgan almost. Or, no, uh, Bill Cosby. You see! Yep, okay, Doctor yep. Strange, I am the pudding master of my domain. I'm wearing uh, the sweater. Okay, stop. I'm going to stop you with your magic and your power. It's going to be recorded on the Kodak film. Here is my evil henchman, Tracy Morgan. Are you going down? Now, where's my Lamborghini? If we don't make you laugh on the Longbox cast, then we are not doing our job. Hey, you know, my uh, my first co-host and I, we used to do that all the time. We'll go off on tangents like that, so this is good. But I like when you <laughs> dropped his name, so I'm like, oh, I can do that. So, yeah, now I want to see Bill Cosby in a villain movie or whatnot. You see, Spider-Man, I am the Hobgoblin. I'm not green, but I'm orange. We're pretty much the same. Except I throw pumpkin bombs for a uh, pudding, <laughs> and you just get it all over your costume, and then I shout out, Rudy, <laughs> where are my jello pops? <laughs> yeah, I want to see that. I want to see Bill Cosby in a villain role now or something. Let's put him in the Joker scene now. Oh, no. You ever wonder how I got these scars? My father was a drinker, and he came home one night drunker than usual, and he has a knife out when he's looking at my mom going, I'll go and get you, and then I come in, he's all like, well, I'm so serious, son, did you not eat your dessert? It was pudding. They're like, sir, could you stop working pudding into every one <laughs> of your lines? Uh, and please take off that sweater. Yeah. What are you talking about? The Joker now wears a sweater. It keeps him warm and the Batman doesn't know what to do. So. <laughs> That's what, who they should have casted as Lex Luthor is, uh, is Bill Cosby. I'm I'm uh, done for now, guys. I'm done. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I was. Uh, just I, I did hear he's going to play uh, one of the Power Rangers. So. Oh no. Okay, I. You know what? I am going to jump in because Power Rangers have actually come into comic book world now more often. Um, I will talk about this. Apparently, there was this huge thing with like uh, one of the Power Rangers shows that's coming up next week, and everyone got so excited for. It. They're like, "This is the first female black." Uh, Ranger, that's pink. Yes. yes. Uh, next year, uh, Power Rangers Dino Charge. Uh, we are actually going to have our first female Black Pink Ranger. And honest, and this is also well, something. Uh, we also have not had a female Black Ranger, or a female Ranger that was black in quite a few years. Probably almost a. Uh, somewhere between 10, 15 years, so this is actually uh, quite nice. Well, that's what was funny, because how people were saying it, they're like, they kept saying the first one, and I know they mean, like, the first one as a pink ranger, because yes. I'm also sitting there going like, yeah, but when the yellow one left, didn't, like, a black girl take over for her? And then we had a black yeah. yellow ranger, so I'm like, I don't know. And what was the deal? Yeah. I really got into another, like, <laughs> cherry stuff. <song. laughs> What's the deal? Uh, what was the deal with that, where it was a it was a female yellow ranger? But mm-hmm. she didn't have a skirt. Like she was, they made her more of like the guys. Yeah. Well, in the Japanese counterpart, uh, Super Sentai, 
that role was actually played by a guy. It was actually four guys and one girl. Uh-huh. So when it when the Heim Saban picked it up and wanted to turn it into Power Rangers here, it, it seemed better to have it as I mean, yellow here seems more of like a girl color than anything else. So they were like, well, let's just make her female, and but we'll make her more of like a tomboyish character, so this way it makes sense for why she doesn't have a skirt. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, at least you solved the mystery after 20,000 years for me. So, again, <laughs> first Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was a little racist there. I'm the Black Ranger, and you're black. I'm the Yellow Ranger, and you're Asian. I'm the Red Ranger, and he was Native American. I'm just kidding, it wasn't. Well, that would have been, yeah. been so hilarious yeah, yeah. if he was. But, I mean, they didn't even put two and two together until, I think, after, like, ten episodes. They're like, uh, uh, we messed up. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, congratulations for that. I'm glad we have a black female Power Ranger that's pink now, I guess. Yeah, so, it's um, a new milestone. New milestones for the Power Rangers. I know Eric Berry will talk all about it on his, but I just, I just thought I'd bring that up. Yeah, he already did. Uh, good for him. What does he want? Yeah, what, does he, what does he want? More listeners? Can we have some of his listeners, please? That's why I was throwing in some Power Ranger stuff. And so I was like, you know, they'll be like, oh, Power Ranger. Oh, so good. Because I assume all of his listeners are Japanese. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, uh, you are the toilet right. of power. <laughs> oh, Black Power Ranger. Oh, oh female. Oh, oh, to all my friends in the Ranger Nation, I'm sorry this is happening right now. Oh, uh, no, he's not. He's enjoying it. <laughs> you know who should have been a Black Ranger? Me. I would like Power of the Battle Horn or whatever the damn elephant's name was. And I have an axe that throws pudding at the bad guy. <laughs> They're like, look, he, he even transforms and he just puts the sweater over the costume. <laughs> Cosby, could you stop? No, I can't. And Cosby and Aegis. Yeah. Uh, so, what other great news do we have going on here? Let me go check out the uh, the um, show notes here. Well, oh, you did put that one. Our, yeah, we got our first real good look at uh, Vision. Okay, yeah, let me check that out because I someone said that and I clicked on it and then it just kept showing me the back image of. Oh, okay, there he is. Oh, okay, yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah. Really uh, true. Is, really true to the comic. Yeah, that's what, that's why I said I was like. Damn, this actually looks like a comic book thing. Yeah. Well, that was the thing. Like, I really enjoyed, like, I think they did a very good job. I mean, obviously, you can't screw up Iron Man. I mean, you could screw it up, but, I mean, you have it, like, right there. Like, it's like, yeah. let's put this together. That's also, like, Spider-Man's costume. It's like, you really can't screw this up. Same with, like, Superman Want and that. stuff like that. Oh, who screwed up Spider-Man's costume? Well, back when Amazing Spider-Man 1 was first coming out and they released the costume, everyone was like, this doesn't look like the Spider-Man costume at all. And I think they eventually just changed it up to make it look more like a comic book, but they did kind of mess it up a little bit. Well, they did, but then, like, like I was on board. I was like, ah, oh, really? Oh, okay, this is what they're going to do. And then I realized, because I didn't even pay attention, I guess, like, like he just kind of bought this speed suit thing and then just, like, put his costume together. So I'm kind of like, oh, okay, this is just him trying. Most likely they were trying something new because we're like, we're different than Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, guys. And then they realized, this was the worst idea ever, guys. But that was like Captain America. Like, I really liked his costume in the first uh, Captain America movie. And then the Avengers came out, and I was kind of like, yeah, there's no real good way to do that costume. Like, no. like that. And then when the second movie came out of uh, Captain America, I'm like, oh, I hope they stick to this kind of costume. Because it, um, it wasn't overboard. It was like a darker blue. It still had the same mm -hmm. kind of concept, but it looked more like kind of like a battle kind of thing like he had in the military, which it looks like they're keeping that with Avengers 2. So I was like, okay, yeah. cool. So I understand, like, his costume it really isn't that easy to get down, but they were able to make it work. Now they finally found their footing. So I'm like, okay. Uh, Iron Man, of course, if you screwed that up, what the hell. Um, Hawkeye is still kind of like one of those costumes. I'm like, I know we're not going to get the purple oh, no. costume oh, no. ever, but that. I do like what it looks like in Avengers 2. It looks like he almost has kind of like that long coat thing going on now. Um, mm hmm and then the only thing I hate, though, is like when you watch some of the cartoon shows when they're basing it off of that costume of Hawkeye, they're like, let's remove his sunglasses. And I'm like, let's give him sunglasses. I'm like, it doesn't make sense because half of his battles, he's like firing at night. So I'm like, just give him a damn mask. <laughs> 
uh, it it's Hawkeye. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's yeah. just kind of sh- trying to show, hey, I can still never miss even when I'm wearing sunglasses, so suck it. Oh, that is true. But yeah, no, this Vision design looks really good. Um, I know I've seen the Ultron designs as well. So, I mean, at least I know Marvel is really sticking with their... um with their uh, <clears throat> their outlines for their comic books, because I'm like, you really can't screw up a costume. Like, I mean, Daredevil's costume, another costume hard to do, and they try to do kind of like, it's like almost like a jacket on them and stuff like that, which, you know, I think they did a pretty good job with that costume, because uh, it's also kind of difficult to do, where it's all like, here's an entire, like, red superhero guy. I mean, they could have originally gone with his original, which was yellow, so. Yeah. But, uh, and speaking of this, uh, Robert Downey Jr. says there are no more plans for uh, an Iron Man 4 at the moment. Oh, okay, at so, the moment. Yeah, I I have a feeling the Iron Man franchise is probably going to be done now. I mean, you know, Robert Downey Jr. wants so much money. but And honestly, I mean, the first one was good. Second one, not as much good. I still see that as like a poster child for uh, Avengers 1. And then Iron Man 3, I was just kind of like, uh, it's weird like I know a lot of people did not like Iron Man 3 um, and a lot of people did not like Iron Man 2 now don't get me wrong I love Iron Man 1 I think it was a great movie it oh, was, yeah. It's, oh, it's, yeah, me too. it's the best one in the franchise like I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna say anything but I did enjoy Iron Man 2 like I did enjoy them introducing you know uh, War Machine um, I did like the kind of problems like Tony Stark was having, but I actually enjoyed Iron Man 3 over Iron Man 2 just because of the post-dramatic stress he had after the yeah. war in New York. And I really like that because if you think about it, it's like Iron Man's never had a deal. He dealt with he's been dealing with like military people, basically people have been trying to take his weapons, use them for, you know, espionage, like all this kind of stuff. So he's dealing with like basically the real world of human beings like terrorists, basically. And then he has to deal with that and then come back kind of to the real world. It's like, now you're thinking like, oh, what about the Hulk? I mean, the Hulk is battled. Like, he battled fucking Abomination. So it, the Hulk, it's not phasing him at all, some of the shit he has to fight. Uh, right. Captain America is used to it because he's used to war. He dealt with this kind of stuff with, you know, with Red Skull and everything like that. Thor, fuck, mm-hmm. is a goddamn god. So he's like, I've seen shit like this every day. <laughs> um, and all that kind of stuff. Like. And also same with like uh you know Hawkeye and Black Widow they've both been in actual war like like he said in the perfect line in the Avengers movies like we're not soldiers you know and it, and it's true like Iron you know he's just he's a man basically so I mm-hmm. did like that I did also like the fact that like it showed him how he could do shit outside of the Iron Man costume mm-hmm. so it did kind of show like hey this guy can be resourceful whether he has his armor or not so he's a, definitely a force to be reckoned with um, yeah and this. It definitely showed how much more smarter or how smart Tony Stark really is. It does disappoint me if there's not going to be an Iron Man 4 because they have been tooling around now with the idea of the Mandarin actually being the Mandarin. Yes, that would be kind of cool. Maybe they'll bring him in for uh, Doctor Strange. Oh, I would like that, actually, because I did like the fact that like the they said something where like Trevor, the guy... Um, Ben Kingsley character, Trevor, who was the yeah. Mandarin in the movie. Uh, I guess when Iron Man 3, no, Thor The Dark World, I think, came out, they put a short yep. film with it, which I've not yet yep. seen, and it was supposed to be uh, actually... It, oh, what? It's pretty good. Yeah, I that's what it, I... It's pretty good. That's what I heard, so I was like, okay, and I was like, you know what, Ben Kingsley, pay, not only did he play Trevor really fucking well, I thought that was hilarious, but I also really, like, him playing the Mandarin was really freaking good, too, so I'm just kind of like... But I even said the same thing, like, when I first saw it, I was kind of like, ah, oh, I'm kind of disappointed, because the Mandarin, you know, he's supposed to be... And then I also realized, like, mm-hmm. if... You know what, now that you said that, putting him in a Doctor Strange movie, and I hope they keep with Ben Kingsley with this, uh, now makes sense, because I'm like, I'm like, he's fucking rings, he's magic. Like, to try right. to introduce that into the Iron Man world that you develop for cinema... Would totally have thrown yeah. everybody off. Like everybody would just sit there and be like, "What the fuck is this?" Like, and I get that. <clears throat> exactly. I mean, this is gonna. I mean, because they really haven't done magic other than four, but I mean, they kind of explain that more as like a science slash magic type thing. And then, I mean, so Doctor Strange will be kind of like the real first magic movie, and they're gonna start to introduce a little bit of magic with Scarlet Witch and Avengers too. Yes. So, which is also going to be, we'll see how pussyfooting they do around that with them, like, not trying to mention that they're mutants. I have no yeah. idea how they're going to do that. Uh, I'm hoping they do, like, a name drop for Magneto, kind of like, uh, oh, you should, you think we're bad, you should see our dad. Yeah, something like that. Um, 
So yeah, so I, I yeah, like I can understand if I could do it. I mean, la- I mean, technically, when I read everybody's script, like a lot of people, were like yeah, we just signed on for six movies, and everyone's all like, mm-hmm. you know, there was three Iron Man, and then he was going to do three Avengers, and then it's like, you right. know, same thing with Captain America, same thing with Thor, and then yeah, there's going to be spinoff movies. We don't know if people are going to make cameos though in these films, Very because true. that was actually like the coolest thing they did that one summer where they introduced like at the end of the movie of uh, you know the Incredible Hulk be like, hey, I'm putting together a team. Um, Mm-hmm. You know all that kind of stuff. So we don't know. I mean, like, uh, like even that little cameo with uh, uh, Chris Evans in Thor. You know, I thought that was hilarious. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that was pretty hysterical. So and then you know, end of Iron Man three, you got Bruce Banner. Yes, you know. So I mean, that's why uh, you know I'm not that kind of doctor, but it also kind of shows like their dynamic, <laughs> like of how okay, like everybody with everything. So. Uh, you know, but that's cool. I really do like the look of Vision. Um, I wasn't like I didn't know how they were gonna do it, and I like how they are. They're actually just going like, you know, fuck it. It's Vision. This is what he looks like. We're not gonna try to be like. And I'm pretty sure the guy who's gonna play him is just like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Like if I have to be, you know, in this green face the entire time, he's like, that's who I am. I'm fucking Vision. So then that's what I I understand that with people in the movie, they're like, oh, I don't want to wear a mask all the time. That's why they always do that shit where they have to pull off their mask or something happens because like I need some face time. You know, it's all like, like I even said, I'm like, look, like I guarantee you, the only person who's ever going to keep the mask, want the mask go on, he's going to keep it on. And let, and if the mask does come off, he's going to just have the makeup on. If they do the Deadpool movie, like I know Ryan Reynolds is just going to stick right <laughs> to the character. Like he's like, oh, the mask is yeah. going to go on, it's going to stay on. I mean, if they're going to have like my mask gets damaged, you get to see some of my face or I have to show somebody my face of like what happened to me, like what these people did to me. He's like, yeah, just put the fucking makeup on. And he's like, I probably don't care if people can't recognize me because I know he's a huge comic book fan. I mean, even then, they're going to be like, even when he takes his mask off, they're like, see, I'm Ryan Reynolds, or something like that, yeah. you know, just just make fun of, you know, just break the fourth wall. Oh my, actually, now that you mentioned that, I hope they do that, too. He's like, you want to see my face? And then he, like, rips off the mask, and it's like, I'm Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... But yeah, that's uh yeah, so that's cool. At least they're sticking to that uh look of the characters still, so that's good. I'm just trying to remember who else is gonna be, because like Ultron's the one that pretty much creates Vision, doesn't he? Yes, Ultron creates Vision, and then Vision kind of develops some type of like humanity or something like that, and falls in love with Scarlet Witch, and then they bone, and then they have twins, and then the twins don't exist anymore, and then they do in Young Avengers. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. Wait, what? <laughs> I had no idea that she boned Vision. I thought she always boned uh what's his face? Um Quicksilver? No, not Quicksilver. Um That did happen. That did happen too? Okay. Um In the Ultimate Comics. Uh God, what's his name? Winter Soldier. Oh. I thought she had like oh. some weird relationship with him or something like that. Like Bucky, yeah. I, I thought she had a relationship Bucky. with Bucky. <clears throat> at some point. I know point. she had some kind of relationship with Hawkeye, but for the most part she married and had kids with the vision. Damn, and they're probably all sitting there going like and he just looks at him, he's like, dude, I can make my penis as big as I want. I mean this was back in the eighties, so you know, and then they had twins and they're then something happened and then the twins like stopped existing or something and then the whole House of M story happened and mm. then mm. When they introduce Young Avengers, you find out that her kids are still alive and they have superpowers of their own, and but they're not actually their parents or their kids because she altered reality or something, so they became like someone else's kids. But huh. I don't know; it's confusing. Very crazy, very crazy. Well, uh, obviously, every time I I do a podcast with you, I always learn something new. So, um. Interesting. Well, that's good. So, um, before we head out, before we leave the podcast, Kyle came up with a great idea, uh, and yes. I'm gonna let Kyle uh, drop this knowledge on you fans out there. So, we keep asking you guys, you know, like our Facebook, check out our Twitter. Again, if you want to check out the uh, Longbox Cast Twitter, is just at Longbox Cast. Uh, okay. Also, go to you know www.facebook dot com backslash longbox cast and give our a Facebook page like and now I know what you guys are thinking it's like why should we do this stuff I don't have to do this I'm a new listener I don't care well Kyle tell them why they should care well if you if we get to a hundred likes on our Facebook we're gonna give away free shit what yes uh while I was at the convention I got a few books 
and I know you can't see them, but I will post a picture of them when this podcast gets released so you guys can see what's going on. I have with me uh, Daredevil, the original run, issue number 184. Some of you who might recognize it as the yellow background with Daredevil holding the gun straight at the viewer and the words, no more Mr. Nice Guy. I love this issue. I love the cover. So I thought, why not? Now with a little bit more recent or stuff, uh, I don't know if anyone out there listens to the Grim Fairy, or reads the Grim Fairy Tales comics, but I have Grim Fairy Tales Wonderland, Clash of Queens, issue number five out of five. Ooh. You might be wondering, why am I giving you away issue number five of five? Because now you have to go get one through four and read it. But also because it has a nice little, uh, the covers pull out and it creates like this nice little poster looking thing that you can stare at and see a bunch of boobs. Boobs! boobs. Yes. <laughs> and the final book is Superior Spider-Man number 31, the final issue to the series of it. And you get to find out how Dr. Octopus is no more and Peter Parker becomes back with his body. Very nice, very nice. Um, so this is if we get to 100 likes on our Facebook page. Now, I know what you're thinking. Like, oh, if I'm the 100th person that likes, it's not going to be that easy. Basically, we want you people to be uh, paying attention. We want you guys to listen. We want you to engage with us. So Kyle and I will come up with an idea to do for a contest. So not only are people who've already liked the page can participate, but all the new listeners who get us to uh, page 100. Now, what Kyle and I plan on doing now is once we get to 100, and if we do this, this goes over well, people liked it, we think, okay, maybe next, then when we get to 150, we do another contest. 200, do another contest. Yes, we are like a weird stepfather. We will buy your love. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, just keep talking to us. Call us out on bullshit that we miss up on. You know, saying, oh, you know, Superman did that, not Batman. I don't care. Call us out. Um, what else? I'll just ask us questions. Actually, you know ask what? Even even post in stuff. You want to hear Steve do impersonations of certain people yes. that should have played characters. We can do this. Yeah, Bill Cosby, before we leave tonight. Bill Cosby, I will do the Green Lantern Oath. Okay. I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you want to hear him do a voice... Ask away. If you want to hear me do a voice, don't even bother asking. It ain't going to happen. No, I will now. I want Kyle and I to <laughs> engage in each other like this now. We'll do voices back and forth. Oh, yeah, I got to start working on impressions then. Oh, you don't have to work on impressions. You just have like two in the chamber, and that's all you keep using. All right, I got Batman, so. Which Batman? Christopher Nolan. Oh. The easiest one to do, of course. Yeah, but everybody does it. Yeah, well, that's all I got But so they far. do it right. Did they rattle the cages? Cages were rattled. I'm Batman. Oh, okay. I'll give you, I'll yeah. give you one. Yeah. Okay, so... Actually, it's funny. I'm, I'm staring at Kyle because we do this through Google Hangout, <laughs> and then now there's a Hello Kitty thing behind him. Uh, I believe it's owned by his uh, his fiance. Um, on the other side, if you turn your head the other way. Yeah, yeah I see it. Yeah. Okay, but then we found out. I, I do have to bring this up now. We found out Hello Kitty has never been a cat. It's apparently a little no, girl. No, it's not. Yeah, that apparently just I don't know. Yeah, you someone know, someone posted uh, a history of it or something like that and said it's not a cat. And I'm like, there's but whiskers. It, right it there. looks like a cat. That's like to me. Exactly. Well, I'm sitting here. They're like, oh, it's a little girl that wears cat ears. I'm like, okay, that'd be like Disney coming out after all these years as going, hey, you know Mickey Mouse? Not really a mouse. He's a middle-aged white guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the Mickey Mouse comes out like, oh, that's right. I just drink a lot of booze, kids! Huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, and then they say, you know, the only actual animal that wasn't actually an animal was Pluto. Yeah, I call that and bullshit, that too. Him. Yeah. Because a lot of people talk about, like, is Pluto just, like, a, a mentally handicapped dog? But then you think about it, it's like, well, if Pluto's a mentally handicapped one, like, he's the dog that, you know, is just, like, a dog. But then Goofy's a dog. But then Goofy seems more hand- mentally handicapped than, <laughs> than Pluto. Yeah. So I don't know... And he was a, he was the only Disney character that was allowed to uh, procreate. Yeah, because he has a son. Yeah, and they never once mentioned the mother. Oh, damn. So I'm starting to believe that uh, uh, Goofy is like a Dexter type character, where he just plays all this kind of stuff, but he's like, "Gorsh, I'm gonna kill you." <laughs> um. But before we close out with everything and all that good stuff, Kyle, 
If I'm yeah. on the interwebs, if I'm on, if I'm surfing the web, right, and I want to find you, I want to follow you, I want to check out all the stuff that you're doing that has nothing to do with Longbox Cast. What can I do? Well, you can find me on Twitter at Deadpool underscore Ranger. You and normally I'd plug in my website, but that's kind of just been no longer being used, so don't even bother going to DeadpoolRangerTalks.com because that's no longer officially a thing. Mm. But I will now plug in my Instagram. What? Yes, so now you can see all the many pictures that I post, including the stuff that I bought from uh, Baltimore Comic Con and anything else, like what I'm having for lunch and whatnot. So, if my Instagram will load on my phone. Yeah, there we go. You can find me on Instagram at ksdesign zero. Zero nine. Sorry, that took me a second. I never really right. pay attention to my own name. So, on Instagram, KS Design zero zero nine. Very nice. Very nice. Well, you can find me, of course, at Stephen Mooney Jr. on the Twitters. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me at S Mooney Jr. Uh, you can also find us on longboxcast.com, foreverradionetwork.com. Don't forget to also give our Facebook page a like and our Twitter a follow at longboxcast. Feel free to contact us, whether you want on Twitter or on my Twitter, his Twitter. Uh, you want to send us a tweet, you want to be like, hey, what's going on, stuff like that. But before we close out the show, I'm giving Kyle what he wants. And probably what the fans do not want right now, because they're like, he's going to do it again. So here we go. <clears throat> in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship in spite beware of my power where a lantern fly. When the pudding comes out of the ring and everybody eats up the dog. Uh, Bill Cosby, could you stop using your ring to make a sweater? (laughs) I'm going to wrap him up nice and tight from the show Rudy to pick up her toys. So Kyle, take us out with those magical words. Long box cast. Too many issues for a short box. It's right. They've got the ability to morph and to even up the score. No one can ever take them down. The power lies on their side. Yeah, 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 yeah. This has been another fine production of the 4i Radio Network. For more great shows, check out www.4iradio.com. You see, Rudy, we're left pudding rock.